That's great. So uh, let me tell you about field day W6EK style. We fly our kid in. <laughs> This is the baddest ass field day in the whole country. If you haven't been here before, you need to come here. If you uh, haven't seen us or worked us before, you want to see us and work us. We are W6EK from Auburn, California. Was a good man. Actually, my life insurance is all paid up. Maybe they, maybe they do want me up a ladder. I think we're going that way too much, huh? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we got to go that way, guys. Towards Brian. like a nice lonely stretch of road but this is actually the active runway I'm out at uh, field day 2019 with my uh, local club we are at the Blue Canyon Airport and I know I've done some field day videos before but uh, what is different about this one is we're gonna be talking to the new hams the guys that just got the tech license I hear an airplane. I think I need to leave. The airport isn't used a whole lot by general aviation because it is, uh, it is fairly remote. There are no services, there's no tower, there's no nothing uh, up here, no fuel. Uh, used heavily by uh, California Department of Forestry during fires and some general aviation but uh, being 5,000 feet above sea level and uh, with a general density altitude that goes anywhere between uh, 5,500 and 8,000 feet sometimes a lot of general aviation planes won't land here now we had a bunch of guys that were supposed to fly in for our group this year, but uh, they, uh, they came in this morning and literally there was 50 mile an hour winds here and they tried to land and it was like a no-go. There was no landing at this field this morning. So our fly-in field day this year has turned into more of a fly-by field day. So what exactly is field day? Well, field day is basically, it's the national ham radio holiday. This is part camp out, part cookout, part party, part anything you want, day in the park. You could sit in your backyard just like I'm sitting here now. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to operate under emergency conditions and make a bunch of contacts. So it's a great excuse to uh, break out whatever ham radio gear you have, whatever ham radio gear you want to have, and get on the air. It's also a fantastic excuse to learn about the hobby and to do things that you don't normally do with people that maybe you don't normally do it, but 
they've got all the equipment and the expertise to do something that you don't know how to do, which lets you in on all the action and you can operate anywhere on the bands. Now you don't need to go to some remote location and operate with a ton of people. You can do this as a uh, one person thing. You can actually just sit in your shack or your room if you want and you can operate on uh, UHF, VHF, satellite, 6 meters, 10 meters, HF, anywhere on the bands that you want to operate that you want to play on ham radio. And if you don't have a license and you show up to a field day event, and generally field day events are open to the public. That's part of the deal. It's kind of a big deal and clubs get extra points for making it a public event and like our club we really welcome uh, new hams and non hams to come in we will sit you down at a radio and you will make contacts and you'll figure out what it's all about so for you new guys for the guys that just got a tech license and you you feel like you don't know what you're doing uh, for those of you who might not have your license yet, maybe you're thinking about it, maybe you're interested because of the Jeep Club, because of, you know, some other organization, maybe you want to volunteer with Red Cross, maybe you want to, uh, you know, run some races or stuff. We've got a bunch of people, a bunch of horse people around here who uh, got their ham radio licenses so they could volunteer for, it's called the Tevis Cup, it's a hundred mile run and ride. Uh, through the Sierra Mountains and it uh, not my cup of tea but there are a lot of people who really enjoy doing that one and they volunteer with the ham radio I talked to a bunch of my friends up there at field day and uh, we kind of put a list together of some of the things that you can do with that new tech license you can help out at local community events you can be race communications for uh, bicycle races so I also have held um, an official license with the USA Cycling and done bicycle races and the biggest support was getting the local ham club out a lot of the guys just had tech licenses but the riders came back on those races and said you know what having ham radio operators at this event has made it so much better of an event we felt safer on the course because we knew that there was to be a person there with communications to instantly help in any situation uh, the event ran smoother because you had communications from the start to finish line everything worked better it summits on the air climb any mountain and with VHF you can talk to 100 miles out that's a lot of fun I made a contact 135 miles away to somebody that was had a 8 watt Chinese brand Baofeng handheld. He was on a mountain peak, 8,000 feet, and I was here at 5,000 feet, and we made a contact. Soda, one of my favorite things, and then checking in uh, with the local nets. A tech license is you can do soda activations, which is basically you climb to the top of a mountain, and you try and make contact from the top of the mountain. Talk to your friends when you go camping. You can get a general and you can get an extra. You could come to field day and be a legit member of the club because you can't really be a member of the club without at least a tech license. You can come to field day and operate on any frequency you want by yourself. Build things like radios, SDR radios. Yes. The fun thing is, go to field day with, with your buds. APRS, satellites. Six meters. I just found out satellite works pretty good with a tech license. You can hit that. It sounds mysterious. It sounds wonderful. It sounds exciting. It's not that hard. You're basically talking through a repeater in the sky. So on two different bands. So usually it's two meters up, seven centimeters down, sometimes reversed. You know exactly when the band is open by laws of physics. Satellite's coming by and you can talk to it. If it's not coming by, you can't. Band's closed. Um, all kinds of modes, all kinds of satellites, all kinds of things you can do with them. And all it takes is a handheld or a radio, uh, an antenna, and a satellite. And HAMS have launched satellites since the 60s. Um, and uh, they're now CubeSats. They're little, these boxes with things sticking out the sides. They throw them into space by the dozen. 
and they have radios in them, and we can talk through those radios to other people on, on the ground. And you're part of the space age. You're, you're doing physics, you're doing science. Hey, are you into drone racing? Well, the first person view goggles on the racing drones, they are in the ham bands there. So get your license and operate legally. Wait a minute, All right, let me think about it a minute. It's a license to learn. So you can get a radio, you can start playing, get on the, ra get on the air with it, and you'll learn a lot faster by being able to read, see, and actually touch the radio. So that's, that's my three things. Get on the radio, play with UHF, VHF, repeaters, digital modes on, uh, and let's see, uh, you can have some HF privileges too, can't you? Yeah, so, and you don't need CW anymore, so, isn't that nice? So these are just a few of the things that you could do with your tech license if you're thinking about getting into the hobby or you've just gotten into the hobby, really explore everything in this hobby learn from other people learn from the videos learn from everywhere and just get on the air i'm going to show you a little bit more of our field day and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button hit it now and that like button because it really does help all right guys i'm out of here i'm bob k6uda 73